Hello, did you know that one in five women and one in 71 men will be raped at some point in their lives? My name is Pamela Esparza and I work at La Vida Partnership at the Chat Center. So Chat Center provides a safe space for, for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault to seek services. We also provide collaborations with La Vida Referrals and we work on sustainability for the efforts of the project. So some of the program services that we offer at La Vida are, so most of our services are confidential, so we won't share it to the community or anyone that you know unless you tell us that you prefer that someone knows the information. We also provide free legal services. We also provide counseling. We also do support groups for women in Spanish. And we also do preventative services, such as going to schools and we talk about self-esteem, we talk about healthy relationships, and we talk about topics that are around domestic violence. So today we will be talking about something very important and this topic is about sexual assault. So did you know that one in five women and one in 71 women will be raped at some point in their lives? Also, did you know that one in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually abused before they turn 18? So sexual assault is defined as any sexual contact or behavior that forces someone to do something that they did not consent to. Sexual assault is a crime based on power and control. So some of the examples include any unwanted touching or kissing or forcing someone to do sexual acts, rape or attempting to rape, sexual contact with someone that cannot give consent, and using sexual insults towards your partner. Sexual abuse also includes coercion or tampering with contraceptives or any form of birth control. So one of the common myths is that sexual assault is provoked by someone based on what they're wearing or any promiscuous behavior or manner. However, Sexual assault is never the survivor's fault. No one asks for this crime against them, regardless of, how, regardless of how someone is behaving and what they're wearing or if they're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Let's talk about consent. When we specifically talk about consent, we, we refer to as a mutual, active, sober, freely given agreement between participants to engage in sexual activity. When we talk about consent, there's many key points about consent that we, that we should keep in mind of. First of all, consent should be clearly expressed and it should never be assumed or implied. If someone doesn't say yes, we should never assume that that's a yes answer. Also, consent is also given willingly. It should never be forced or coerced. Consent is also coherent. For instance, someone that is under the influence of drugs and alcohol cannot give consent coherently. If they are under the influence, Please do not force them. Consent is also reversible. If someone feels uncomfortable taking the next step in a sexual activity, it is very, it's acceptable to say, I am not comfortable doing this. Also, let your children know about sexual assault. Teach your children the appropriate names of body parts because if they don't know the names of the appropriate body parts, it may end up creating some confusion when reporting to the authorities. Additionally, it's okay to say no if they feel uncomfortable hugging someone. Even if it makes us feel uncomfortable, we should really teach our children about boundaries. Additionally, we also have to be a safe space for children because one day they may come to us and they may say, I don't feel comfortable doing X, Y, Z with, with someone else. And we need to be that safe space for them. And when our children come to us, we need to take the time to listen so that way, we, so that way they know they're being supported and validated. It's very important to know the warning signs of sexual abuse. Some of these key warning signs include display of inappropriate behavior for a child's age. Sometimes a child may display sexual behaviors and that is not appropriate for their age. Another warning sign is being someone demonstrating fear of being left alone in, in a certain place or with a certain somebody or being away from primary caregivers. Another warning sign is t avoiding taking off clothes, whether they're about to shower or whether they're about to get dressed. They display a very immense fear of taking off clothes. Another warning sign is change changes in self-care, whether it's hygiene or appearance. Another change or another warning sign is consumption of drugs and alcohol. And all, and all, another behavior is self-harming behaviors or tendencies. Also, a person may experience loss of motivation, not wanting to continue in school, not wanting to continue at work, or just not wanting to continue in life in general. Also, STIs are a warning sign, especially in children. 
Another warning sign is unexplained bleeding, whether it's found in the bed sheets, whether it's found in clothes, or any other signs of physical trauma to the body. Sometimes we may have a friend that has been sexually assaulted, we may have a relative that has been sexually assaulted, or maybe just another peer. So a very important thing to do is to support them. So one of the key steps to supporting them is to believe the survivor and because sometimes we tend to question the validity of what they say, it's very important for us to believe in a survivor if they want to take the next step in preventing something like that from happening again. Another thing to do is focus on the feelings, not details that led to the sexual assault. Because again, we want to validate this person's experiences. We want to make them feel like this is a safe space for them to come to us. Additionally, we need to allow silence. We need to allow that processing of thoughts, emotions, and feelings. Also, we want to respect com confidentiality because a lot of times the person may not feel comfortable coming to a person about details of their sexual assault. So it's very important to respect a per person's privacy. Also, we need to provide information on whether it be resources, whether it be phone numbers, or refer them to call 911, or we can also refer them to go to La Vida as well. Also, we need to acknowledge courage because it does take a lot of courage for someone to come to us and tell us the details of their sexual assault. It is not an easy thing to do. Lastly, we need to practice self-care because that, that person that may be experiencing trauma, they can also pass it down to us. So in order for us to mitigate that trauma, we need to practice self-care. If a survivor is telling you that someone or something is making them feel uncomfortable, please listen to them. Get in touch as soon as possible with a staff member from La Vida. And if you want, you can also put in a report with the staff person or the person that you shared your experience with. We are here to support you if you have been in an event of sexual abuse. I want to thank you guys for joining this conversation. And if you know somebody that has been sexually assaulted, and if you know that, can, that they can benefit from our services, or even if you know that you can benefit from our services yourself, you can contact us. And you can also visit us at Chat Center.